You're live, Tyler. Yep. Hello, everyone. My name is Tyler Haynes. I'm uh, I'm uh, sorry about the delay. Unfortunately, I had to. Uh, we had somebody Cam was supposed to do it, but he unfortunately got sick. So I'm gonna step in, in the last minute. So thank you for your patience. Um, I see that we have some questions in the chat and everything. Just let me, uh, you know, just in case you have in life support, please make sure that you reach out for in life support. And then, you know, we have our product roadmap, the one that actually happened today about an hour ago. The next one will be in two weeks. So just make sure you go to those also to get information on our, on our roadmap. So let me just go ahead and sign in here. And I'll open up the floor to any questions we might have. Just give me one second, please. All right. Great. All right, Radley, I think you have a question. I see your hand raised. The floor is yours, sir. For being so on. Um, and the hiding and showing is is easy. Um, I can handle that no problem. Where where the active form flow gets a little messy is when I pick A, I want to I want to have B and C hide again, but I also want to clear out B and C, right? When you pick B, A and C hide and also clear out. Um, so I I mean I can duplicate all the all the, the all the hide steps and um, all the set field steps, but didn't know if there was a way to do that without getting um, you know, so ugly in the in the flow. So you're so I'm just gonna pick are these text boxes or where are they? They, they are they're text boxes, yep. Okay, so I have three text boxes here. I'm gonna call this text C. Don't look at my names. I'm really, you know, text B and text A. Yep. So I've got my I, three three boxes here. Yep. And I have a drop down that allows the user to to pick which, you know, the answer to their question. Mm -hmm. Whichever whatever they're answering, that's when the uh, the text box for that answer shows up. String static, and I'm gonna call this A B C. So something like that. That's right. Yep. Okay. So I'm assuming you want it yep. when you had it when the selection changes. That's exactly it. Of course, you know, probably not the name you have, but right. We can drop into this. Okay. Give me one second. So what I'm assuming you have is you probably run it when that changes, but the first thing you do is you probably get get form data value. Oh no, I want to go get control value. Oh, wait. And then you get the form data and you get what did I call it? I didn't name it real well, combo box. So you probably get the combo box value first. Yep. And then what do you do? Do a string match step or how do you take it from there? Yeah, I do a string match. Yep. Okay. And let's just say the string is A, B, C. That's that. And then I could have direct, I could have skipped that one and just going straight to form data, but I'm going to call this, so you can skip that, combo box, selected item. So there we go. So I can actually delete that step, make this easier. Okay, and if A,
if A is shown, we want to form rules. Now, are, are they all three hidden at the beginning? They are. They're all initially. Uh, um, so it's show, hide, hide. Yeah. Right. So it's form component name, form data. It is, let's just say, let's call, I don't know what name them say. <laughs> Let's move visible. I uh, know. So let's show that one. Let's move text box one. And hopefully that's in the text box. Let's see. So that's what you do. But you also want to. So what I would do to keep it very simple is just set the control value of those other two. So let's set the control value of text box C and make the value null. And then just do the same thing right here. So there's no no method to um to They're not in. repeat those. No. Right? Because okay. They're independent. That we teach every one of those form controls is independence. Okay. That makes sense. It it does. And I was just wondering if there's a better way. I mean, in my scenario, I, I actually have um six options in the drop down list um, so that it's going to get you know pretty messy i think i'll do my best but just didn't know if there are any other uh, any other options or best well ways. you always can just drop a subflow in there okay and make it where this is my subflow for a subflow for b and subflow for c okay but usually i just leave it high level and and this is fine okay because the only advantage of doing this is that you could, you know, group, save a sample and copy it and put A, C, and be yeah. done with it quicker. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good, Tyler. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. I saw that, uh, I'm going to butcher her name, but uh, Mary Lee had a question, but she dropped off. So I'm going to open the floor up to see if there's any other questions. Uh, no, I didn't save it. All right. Just want to open it up right now. We had, you know, we know submitted questions, but please, uh, you know, floor is open for anybody. I do want to mention that we do have a, uh, we actually have a webinar here in, uh, let me go ahead and go here. Give me one second. That we actually do have a webinar coming up here in, uh, in like 40 minutes about our accelerators. I don't know if you guys have been able to see some of our new accelerators that we've been putting out in our marketplace, but we do have a lot of new accelerators in the marketplace. So if I look in my app store right here, of course, I'm in a uh, older version. There that goes. You can see that we put a lot of new, you know, accelerators out there in the market. So, you know, please take advantage of that webinar. Of course, you can see it on YouTube later. We do have a webinar on July 25th on no code with human touch. 
And then we have two trainings happening. One is in Denver, August 8th through the 10th. And the second one is in Sydney, Australia, August 29th to the 31st. We're actually going to revamp the master's class to be more law hands-on. And of course, have our foundations course. So please look into these events that we're having here soon. I just want to open it up to see if there's any more questions. I don't see the DD to a DD question. I can try. Uh, uh, BT. I'm so I don't see the question. There's a question in the chat before I joined. I'm sorry, I can't see it. So could you repeat the question, please? Again, I apologize for joining late. So whoever asked the VA department question, please, you know, either tap it out or Roman, can you allow VT to speak, please, sir? So you want to display something that's two layers down on a drop down control on a form, I assume. So you, is it a drop down list that you have? Okay. So what I tend to do on a drop down list, if I need that type of detail, because you know, if you do it from, you can either do it from a data name where you pull it from, you create the logic before the form, but if you need it dynamic, what I always do if I need that type of NASA data, I make it where it's a flow and call this test. And what I might do, I'm going to fetch some entities I know, and let's fetch the account. The account structure. Then what I simply might do is might just run a simple for each step where I pass in the account entity. Of course, right here, I'm going to do a simple create data and create my list. Now, the one question I do have for you, are you pulling these objects? Do you need to pull the full object downstream or just the one field information? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so the idea behind that is to display on the dropdown and when somebody selects it, output that object from the form. Okay. I'll see you. So let's go with count. Because it doesn't, it only pursues the one. Mm. So what you have to do is do it that way with the flow and pass out that one object field. It's a nested, it's two down. 
and then you have to fetch it right after the form. That's the only way you can get down two levels. You understand what I mean? Like, say you pass out the email address on this form, the next step has to fetch that object by the email address because it is two rows down. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's the only way. Can I'll ask our product team, but I'm pretty sure that's the only way to do it because we're really good about that first layer. But like you said, that second layer, we need, you know, so what I do, because I do that sometimes with, you know, I might have a case entity, which has an account inside the case entity, which is a complex object and a complex object. I want to fetch the account. So what I do is I pass out that email address and then fetch the account the next step. That makes sense. It does, but uh, basically you make the database calls, yep. which is redundant. I know. I want to bring it up to our product team. I agree that's fully redundant and I'll bring it up to our product team. So if you don't mind me asking what type of message queue is it? The message queue. Okay. I don't think I have Kafka installed on here. Do uh, I've got I've got I've got RabMQ or ActiveMQ. <laughs> so I have my ActiveMQ. I'm going to set up my local ActiveMQ, and then you have a uh, a flow that handles it. Yeah, okay. I have a message. I, and I set up a message queue handler. Okay. Yeah, uh, do you lease state. or you get removed? What do you do here? I do lease. Okay. okay. Let me share a piece of information that maybe is what I'm suspecting could be the problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, me and the other developer are also sharing the queue. Uh, and we have two, like each of us have a handler put up, uh, you know, going against the same message queue. Is that going to, are we going to steal messages from it? Is he going to steal messages from me and I'm not going to be able to see him? Is it the same decisions instance? Yeah. Does it have multiple handler flows or just one message handler flow? Multiple message handler flows. I won't have to ask that question because I don't know. Okay. But, no. I can see it. Like, and like, like I'm saying in my message, I'm trying to say like in the sample and unit test, yeah. as I have the flow open, I can see that messages are coming in to the flow that I have hooked up to the handler. It, and then if I choose to like click it and execute it, it will go and write to my table. So I know it's working. It's just, why isn't it doing that automatically when a message comes in? Yeah, that, that makes, the, can, the only thing I would say, if you want to do a test, a flat out test, is in this message handler queue, mm -hmm. I would make it where it sends the message to both places at the same time and see if I it's the that. message, what? How would you do that? Is only you can only pick one. Well, you only have one queue you're looking at, but you can kick it to different flows. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 I, I just basically we just basically in that section I just create two message panels. Yep. But what you could do is create, you know, and send it to two different flows right here. Got it. And test it. And if that works, you know, we need to look at the product or look at the product and see why we can't handle, why we can't have two message handler flows for the same message. I, mean, I kind of understand why it would be a problem because I think maybe you're trying to keep track of like which messages you consume. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm thinking, but that's one way to test it from your side. And then we can get back with, you know, raise a sport ticket over it and get back with our product team, make sure that is intended or not intended. I, I don't know the answer to that question right now. That makes sense. So yeah. How do you pass? Okay. So how do you, how would I pass in? Um, 
the met the you know so let's say i create a, a flow how would i pass in that message to the other flows well if you look right here yeah you should have the message right here yeah and what i would do you know run subflow and there's call and what, the other flows yep and then pass what should be the input to that flow is the message then after yeah. that flow is done or what i would even do because i'm a if you wanted to you know not send it in we have a branch step is that parallelization I think? yep yeah oh, oh. so and then you have path two which sends it directly to the other subflow mm -hmm. and then what i would do if i were you i would make them you probably don't care i'll just make them async and just pass it out and be done with it So that's what I would do. How do you and you connect? How do you connect the end step? Oh, I got to pick a flow. Oh yeah, yeah. Pick, you have to pick something. Uh, yeah, the flow you're okay. kicking it to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and as soon as I do that, as long as there's no if there's no output, then it's a, yeah. So like right cool. here. Okay, this is my. No, I got you. I got you. Yeah, let's just pick my currency flow. You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now I have. Uh, currency flow and there you go and the okay. input will be a message cool i will i will mess around with it yep that's what i would do and if not talk to our product because and it could be that we end up you know because you're doing a lease there's another way to get around it is you add a second active queue with the exact same information except call it Sibo's queue and call it you know his queue or whatever process queue and have two queues also. Yeah, but I'm thinking if I use the same consumer group, um, like would it? I yeah. don't know. Yeah, like would it would it work? I mean, like I think if I'm just doing stuff. You probably want to look at Dev and test it with it. Just yeah. ideas. Okay. That's a great idea, though. Like, yeah, if if, I, if we're conflicting with each other, try a different group. But then it also might be like I could do two different message queues, but I might need another consumer group. I think as, as well on the Kafka side as well. So I well, I don't true because Kafka because you're le but you're leasing, you're not getting, so you should be should be okay on the Kafka side because you're just leasing. So what does leasing mean? Leasing means what? Like that I'm I'm not moving the offset on on Kafka. Yep, you're not you're okay. leasing it for a second and putting it and say, like, okay, I got this message, I'm done. It sits in Kafka. Got it. So then it just sits in Kafka and it doesn't remove it. But it but but something on the decision side saying like, hey, I got that message already. So yep, I'm not gonna okay. It's on, but it's handled on the decision side. Yep. What message are pulled is handled on the decision side. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So it should, like you're saying, it shouldn't really be stepping on each other. Yeah. You know, I'm not the be all XL Kafka expert either. But in theory, that should work. Well, you apply, so thanks for mm -hmm. thank
Looks like it's just me, you, PT. Do you have any more questions? If not, we can let everybody go. Uh, just so everybody knows, I think, are, Roman, are we hosting this on Tuesday or no? I mean, I mean Monday. No, we're not doing on Tuesday. No, uh, Lunch and Learn is going to be canceled for uh, next week. Okay. So no Lunch and Learn next week. So hopefully see everybody the week after. Everyone have a great uh, long weekend if you're celebrating the 4th. Thank you, everyone.